when you look at how much salt or sodium and chloride is required for a horse to survive so that you're looking at around about 33 to 35 percent sodium and about 50 to 55 percent chloride the minerals the trace elements in there they range between 1.8 to 2 percent welcome everyone to episode 118 of the send nutrition podcast with your host brian and peter today and today's subject is macrobiotic salt what is it how are you peter Brian, I'm very well, but uh, just on the topic of salt, reminds me of the 15 salty margaritas I had on the weekend. There's going to be a margarita joke come through. Uh, <laughs> you read my brain. <laughs> um, tequila is a uh, little bit of a linchpin to my uh, drinking, and doesn't it fire you up on the dance floor, Pete? It's Brian's a <laughs> Brian's Achilles heel is the, the margarita. He he just burns the rubber off his shoes on the dance floor. <laughs> Um, so when we when we look at this subject, macrobiotic salt, it's a term that is used, and we will take take you through what it actually is. You might have heard it before in the past. We have had a product in the past about it, but today is going to really take you through why salt is extra important for a horse, how it's actually really essential for their survival, and we'll give you some really good tips to keep them hydrated especially through summer yeah it's it's a very sort of loose topic with the salt brain because i think most horse owners feel or know that their horse needs salt a lot of them are confused what type of salt how much salt like when so it's a it's a podcast we've been meaning to do for a little while and you know now we've got an occasion to do it brian spent i think the last three weeks researching why salt is important <laughs> so he's going to give us a, a a quick rundown of all the research he's come across so it's, it's great to really deep dive things and keep questioning why something is required in a horse's diet and even for us as human beings. So why would you feed your, feed your horse salt? So when you look at how much salt or sodium and chloride is required for a horse to survive, so that's just like what is lost through just breathing, um, existing, the body functions around the horse with its muscle contractions and every other body system they require a minimum of 25 grams of salt and that's not including anything when they're in performance or, or work. So why is salt important? It's actually a trigger for thirst. So a horse requires at least 30 litres of water a day in drinking even up to 50 to keep themselves fully hydrated for all their body systems to work, including digestion. And when you look at how essential salt is for that hydration, you look at Issues with muscles can be related to low levels of salt or, or sodium in the diet. And then when you look even further to the component of saliva, the way a horse requires saliva to lower their ulcer risk when they're eating their long, long stem roughage, you could draw that long bow and say, if you're not feeding enough salt, the horse is not producing enough saliva to then lower the ulcer risk. And good digestion begins in the stomach of the horse the hydrochloric acid in the horse is partly chloride so that's part of salt as well so this this is actually so important for their overall digestion brian that, that was really well covered do you want to just continue with the next step as well yeah and even furthermore to that with digestion it actually helps their immune system barrier so if the horse doesn't have sufficient acid in their stomach bacteria can actually take advantage of of this when they're ingesting their food. Sodium is an essential mineral in their body and they can't make it on their own. So a daily consumption is required. And that's why we really advocate on that in the feed and not as a salt lick block, but we'll get onto that later in this podcast. Yeah, some of our listeners might be using our, our Sen Electrolyte product. Obviously that's got the, you know, the sodium chloride along with, with the zinc, magnesium, I think it's got calcium. That electrolyte product is great, but it doesn't substitute a salt. Yeah, correct. It's salt first, then electrolyte, and we will take you through that order. As you know, with Sen, nature knows best, and we have a term that we will give you a good definition of, and it is macrobiotic, and in its relation to macrobiotic salt, what is it? So it's a term that's used to distinguish the origins of something that is from an unpolluted source or from this case, unpolluted waters. And there is a definition between refined and unrefined salt. And macrobiotics is all about food from the earth and keeping it as pure as possible. 
Brian, some of our, our listeners might uh, you know might be taking the the Celtic or Celtic sea salts or some of the Himalayan salts, and look, they'll be aware that those natural salts they're unrefined, and what that means is that they haven't been processed, and the eighty minerals and trace elements haven't been removed, basically. So that's the easiest way to know whether a salt is unrefined or refined. As contrasted with the re- refined salts, the unrefined salts contain much more than sodium chloride, as I just said. Um, you're looking at around about 33 to 35% sodium and about 50 to 55% chloride. The minerals, the trace elements in there, they range between 1.8 to 2%, and the rest of that is is moisture. So it's you know when you when you start looking at the 80 trace elements in there there's a reason why naturally they're in there so when you start removing them or you start refining them you got to ask yourself the question a why they're getting removed or refined and we'll go into in depth why and you might be surprised why they actually remove them and and refine them well i think the first one is just to make it look nicer or uh, yeah yeah brian you're 100 presentation right. it's the presentation but then what happens with those with those trace elements is they end up selling them as raw as raw trace elements mm. on the on the open market so yeah. you're actually taking something out um and then you're adding an anti-caking agent because you're removing the natural can- anti-caking trace elements so you're adding an anti-caking agent in there to stop it from caking because you've modified the product yeah and also, in those sort of terms, you're actually devoiding it of taste as well. So those other minerals really give it that that flavour. Or if you can imagine salt being saltier than salt or taste better, that's what macrobiotic salt is. A lot of those refined salts, Brian, they're used chemicals to, to treat and to refine. Um, and some of them even include sulfuric acid and, and chlorine as well. Yeah, it's not the most natural way to look at an element like salt and what we're looking at is nature and how nature intended it although we have to be aware that when you source things from nature there could be the potential for modern pollutants microplastics and contaminants so in some situations they're refining these salts because of the pollution in the water as well but that devoids the overall chemical composition of it Yes, you do want sodium chloride. That's that's your aim. But having the other trace minerals is only going to have a nice benefit to the body systems of the horse. Well, especially, Brian, if there's other trace elements that you mentioned, especially if the horse is deficient in them. So if you're, if you're just going to feed the sodium chloride and you don't have the other 78, you're going to have to – well, the horse is going to have, have to get them from somewhere. It might be through feed, might be through pasture, might be some in hay. But – it's very seldom where the horse is going to overdo on those trace elements. So you're better to have them in than have them out. And that actually leads us into a common question we get asked in regards to horse owners feeding salt and is why can't I just feed pool salt? It's easily accessible. It's most often a cheaper price. But horse owners have to be aware that pool salt is not intended for human consumption it's actually because the manufacturing standards are not as strict as salt or food grade salt intended and there's a potential that chemicals have been used to really strip it down for the sodium and chloride for people to put in their pools and another way of looking at it is you're not going to take a bag of pool salt and start cooking with it upstairs in your kitchen. Brian, does that mean I have to stop drinking my pool water when I go in? <laughs> <laughs> Am yeah. I not going to be uh, around yeah. next year? <laughs> Or, or use it in your margaritas or your salt, <laughs> your pool salt. But, but that's a val- yeah. it's a very valid point. We don't go drinking our pool salt water yeah. and we don't go seasoning our steaks with pool, pool salt. salt as well. So if we're not prepared to do it ourselves, as Brian mentioned in our last podcast, humans and horses are mammals. Yeah. So if we're not prepared to do it, why are we doing it to our horses? Yeah, correct. We, we do want that food grade. We want that food grade standard because – a horse is ingesting it just like we are ingesting. Our body systems are very similar, not the same, but the key physiology around muscle contraction, the way water and blood moves around the body is the same with mammals. And when another aspect of all this is if you do have a high level horse that is insured, you can run the risk of your insurance being voided because you're supplying something in the diet that's not intended for animal consumption is it's for a pool <laughs> and and being industrial grade 
not being met at those standards of processing, that could be flagged and then maybe your sh- insurance may be voided in that case. I think it's a risk, Brian, that our customers probably don't want to take. And and look, if someone's really sort of budget conscious, you know, as a lot of us are obviously throughout this this sort of time time in, in life, I've actually run the numbers on different options and I'm, I'm happy to share it with everyone here before we go on to the next topic. So if you're looking at for, for a human-grade, food-grade, macrobiotic salt you're looking roughly at around about $24 a kilo so I don't know whether that's a lot or not but I you know I use the highest quality one obviously so $24 a kilo it's sort of it's sort of up there um our Sen macrobiotic crystal salt which we'll get into shortly works out at about $4.99 a kilo and you're looking for you know run-of-the-mill pool salts they're about $1.50 a kilo Mm. so there's a bit of a gap there but how does that equate to a cost per feed per day. So let's just compare the pool salt against the, the Sen macrobiotic salt. You're looking at around about 12 cents per day to feed 25 grams of the of the Sen macrobiotic salt, or you're looking around about 5 cents per day to feed the pool salt. So for the sake of... 5 cents. 5 cents, you day. know, yeah. just... You know, miss one coffee a day or, or you know, miss that six-pack of well. Corona on a Sunday <laughs> with lime. <laughs> it's actually well well put, Pete, with that whole breakdown because what we want is the most natural and food-grade elements for our horses and the added trace minerals as well. They haven't been refined or bleached out of the whole formula. It's actually a lot more healthier for the horse. That's 100%. Right, Brian. Do you want to get into the best part about going over the Sen Macrobiotic Crystal Salt? Well, you know at Sen we really strive for the best ingredients, the highest quality. And I think if clients have been around since probably four or five years ago, we did have a macrobiotic salt on the market. And yeah. gee, it's it's hard to source. Like you have to get it from a sustainable source because we don't want to damage the environment. We've got to try and make it free from modern pollutants, microplastics and contaminants. And really, when you look at the ocean, it's kind of the, the dumping ground of the earth and microplastics, heavy metals, everything goes in there. So what's protected from all these conditions or elements would be inland plains, salt lakes, around like that. So, And that's exactly what we have tried to source and from a sustainable source as well. Yeah, 100%, Brian. Um, our salt is actually wild harvested, so there's no sort of mechanical sort of processing or any machinery or anything that sort of goes through it. The The salt crystals are, are basically food grade, which retains a natural balance of, of those trace elements. Uh, as you mentioned before, it's it's unprocessed, no modern pollutants, but big, you know, big point here too. It's it's unbleached. So a lot of those those powdery salts that you see in the supermarkets, the table salts, a lot of those are bleached. And once again, they've stripped of those trace elements. And I'm never going to understand why these big companies go stripping all those trace elements when we need it as humans. Uh, our, our horses need it, obviously, as our animals. But maybe it's just to bring the cost down other products so they can increase their margins. So the way Brian and I have thought along the years is that when it, when it's made by nature. It shouldn't be tampered with. It needs to be in its, in its natural state. Yeah, hundred percent. And as you know, I'm quite inquisitive about nature and and why things are a certain way. And this is a little bit of a tangent, but I had to ask a question: Why is the ocean salty? And then how how do you even get salt in the inland of Australia, or how do you get salt lakes in the world? So I'll take you through this in a simple explanation. So when you look at how the oceans are set up around the world, it is where everything runs off the land into the ocean, including pollution, unfortunately. But that's how the salt ends up in the ocean and the salt concentration in the ocean is about 3.5%. But how does it get there? It's in actual fact due to rain, so water, mixing with carbon dioxide in the air and then that makes carbonic acid, which makes our rain, in fact, slightly acidic so when the rain hits rock it actually takes the minerals including sodium and chloride so salt out of the rock so rock salt and then that drains all the way down to the lowest part of the earth which is the ocean and this is continually worldwide and that's why the ocean is salty but then how do you get the inland salt plains or the salt lakes is because there's no runoff into the ocean it just stays in the center of a large landmass like Australia. So 
rain creates salt from hitting the rocks because it's slightly acidic. So I found that quite interesting. Why is the ocean salty? It's probably what my four-year-old would ask me because he's in the why, why, why <laughs> session. And um, I'll probably try and talk to him about that. But um, yeah, I found that quite interesting. That's the extreme I'll summarise, Brian. I also want to add too that our salt is independently tested and it's free from harmful chemicals, heavy metals, and microplastics. I think we've got a photo on a website there showing the, the analysis. And we're so impressed with our quality of our salt that it hasn't been on the market for too long, but the, the clients that have it have been reporting all sorts of positive benefits they've seen to their horse, including them eating their hard feed better, which is recommended. Well, because they have the trace elements in it, the horse is actually less thirsty, um, as funny as that sounds, because if you can imagine, if you're going to get that processed table salt, it's going to be just sodium chloride pretty much with nothing else to dilute that sodium chloride, where you've got the trace elements, even at you know around about that 2%, there's 80 different trace elements in there, so it's naturally a more balanced product. And even the feedback we've had with our salt has gone as far as in the Send Users Group from Maddie, who is a, a very valued Send client. So what she noticed was she was on a normal iodized table salt and she switched it to the Send Macrobiotic Crystal Salt. And what she has noticed that with her horse, Anton, who's a Frisian gelding, his poos have been forming better, which probably equates to the better digestion that is happening with this salt. And this is the only change in the diet. So she's she's really impressed with it. And I think we've had a number of phone calls, even over the past week, that they've report that horse owners reported that their horse has been a bit fussy with salt in their feed and they, they haven't had that since switching yeah and i think obviously with our product being more a crystal form rather than than sort of the sandpaper sort of you know fine sand granules if you can even call it i think it's going to be a lot easier to to stick to the pallets maybe you know mix with the oil um and obviously it's it's not as salty as the the processed sodium chlorides we've obviously tried it here mm. um, on our tongues and it if anything is it it sort of dissolves on your tongue pretty quickly it doesn't doesn't sort of you know stay hard for a long time where you've got to sort of bite it down on your with your teeth <laughs> yeah yeah and overall it just completes our whole send diet being very pure and natural and we're so happy to complete that piece of the puzzle Brian do you want to let our listeners know the the best news about the the send microbiotic salt? Yeah, so what we have offered is in a two-pack bundle direct from us because the demand has just been crazy because we originally had it in the foundation pack bundle with the CA50 and the oil. Now I think it was released yesterday that you can get it in the two-pack free shipping in most parts of Australia. Yeah, so so how it works, Brian, is the the salt comes in a two-pack and they can add an oil, they can add a small supplement, they can add a large supplement – or, or even a collagen as well. So it doesn't restrict you. The only thing that's, that, that's excluded is, the, is obviously the 20 litre oil, but any, any small oil, small supplement or light supplement in conjunction with the two pack of salt will be, will be free freight Australia wide. Yeah, I've just done a quick calculation. And when we recommend a minimum feed of 10 grams per 100 kg body weight of salt per day for a horse, and that's the minimum because I've been talking to a few nutritionists in Australia that recommend even a little bit more than that during these hotter climates because you can't give too much salt. Like you you could if you did 10 times that amount, but 1.5 times that amount is is not going to hurt the horse. The kidneys will just regulate that on a daily basis and it's that consistency that, that the horse requires rather than overloading it one day and not feeding it the next. So... Kidneys are very re- good at regulating sodium and chloride within the body. And I think with Peter and I being in this industry for the last 10 years, it's been one of the missing things in a lot of diets that we see that come in that, that the horse has got problems. And this has been one of the simple fixes. Yeah, we've also listened to feedback. When we were creating the product, a lot of, a lot of our customers said that you know they weren't a big fan of the 25 or the 20 kilogram bags. So we've actually listened and we've put our food grade salt into an eight kilogram bag. So very easy to, to store, very easy to carry. Um, you know, you can decant it into a bucket as well. And, and as I said previously, you know, you're looking at around about 12 cents a day for, um, you know, like for the recommended daily dose, or you're looking at four or five cents for the, for the pool salt. And I mean, it might look expensive when you see it next to a pool salt on a shelf, but you really got to look at what it's costing you, you know, 
per feed per day. And to me, if you you know if you can't afford five six cents, you know I don't know. Um, I've yeah. just done some quick calculations going back to that feed rate. So if you have one horse, fifty grams a day of salt. If you buy one bag of so if you look at one bag of the Sen macrobiotic salt, it lasts nearly six months. Yeah, for perfect. that one one horse. So that's. So that's less than a forty dollar outlay for six months. Or you, you can sense. share it with your friends, and if you're in an adjustment, you can share it around. But you know, if you're getting a twenty a twenty kilo pool salt, that's going to be almost what two and a half years. Yeah, <laughs> maybe it goes maybe it goes into the pool before it goes into the yeah. horse's and, pool. And a substandard quality in in that respect. And we pride ourselves on that pure food grade quality in our feed ingredients because we're trying to work with the horse's body systems and work with other elements in the diet including the Sen Feed Foundation. So just one one last point. Uh, I think we're at 49 five-star reviews on Spotify. Can someone please 49. just... yeah can, No, 49. Yeah. Can someone please give us one more five-star <laughs> so Brian can sleep please. well at night because he's getting paranoid. <laughs> We've got the users group. It's a, it's a buzz of activity. A lot of people, a lot of new people joining, which yeah. is good, uh, sharing their, their obviously results and, and always asking very smart questions and i think that's it brian anything from you i I think that's about wraps it up salt is so important for your horse uh we've got we're really in the groove with our podcast as well so keep any suggestions coming in if you want to hear a certain topic we might have a q a one soon but i do have a number of special guests including some of our ambassadors and they're going to be on various topics that you will find interesting not just in nutrition but the horse landscape in Australia, training and helpful tips. So I think until then, Pete, we will might grab some salt for some margaritas. <laughs> <laughs> My liver's hurting, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think uh, I think we, we're both still doing the plunges and it's just keeping us nicely in that uh, zen mode and just tap on that five-star review on Spotify and we will see you again next week. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.